Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zed, and today we are starting a brand new campaign in RTR Imperium Serectum. Yes, RAS version 0.6 is out, and we are going to be starting our brand new campaign today, guys. So if you do enjoy this content, make sure you do like and subscribe. We're on the way to 5,000 subscribers, so a subscribe and a like would be massively appreciated. And today we are playing Epirus, guys. We're going to treat this more as a Blitz campaign. Now, Epirus at this point in time had just lost the stalwart, the sort of icon of Epirus in Pyrrhos two years before in 272 BC. And his son is now on the throne and they are sort of starting the transition now towards a more centralized state in Epirus around this time. So it's going to be interesting to see what we do. We're also start at war with the Antigonids, carrying on the war against Antigonus Gennatus that our father started. So let's get into the campaign map and let's get going. So here we go as Epirus, guys. And of course, we are playing on very hard, very hard. I'll just prove it to you. There you go. We are playing on very hard, very hard. And we're also going to tick the extreme mode, which just gives the AI a few more extra bonuses and a bit more money. So more difficulty than we played in the Seleucid campaign. So that should be a good challenge. Now I have just toggled the fog of war so you guys can see how glorious Greece is now. All the way from the Thracian lands, such as the Trabali, the Dentalate uh, over here. All those sorts of boys all the way down through Greece to central Greece as well with loads more factions and Greece is just glorious now and I really wanted to just show that to you guys. Now of course we start in a really decent situation as Epirus apart from the fact that we are at war of course with the Antigonids. <laughs> so we're at war with a big baddie around here but they shouldn't be too much of an issue. We've got plenty of things to do however first of all let's get rid of this ship and let's also show you our faction leader alexander of epirus now this guy has claims to many many different things if we go on to the uh, faction tree the faction family tree we can see pyrrhus up here and ptolemaeus there and helenos here as well now ptolemaeus unfortunately when Pyrrhus went to try and put a Spartan claimant on the throne of Sparta um, in the retreat, Ptolemaeus died. And that is probably some of the reason why um, Pyrrhus went into Argos and then we all know what happened there, don't we guys? So if you don't know what happened to Pyrrhus at that point, then uh, check out my Pyrrhus video. I have done a video on the history of Pyrrhus's death. So do check that out as well. Um... But yeah, it's really interesting his history, this guy, because at this point, Lanassa is also the daughter of Agathocles of Syracuse. So technically, Alexander also has a claim on Syracuse, as well as being the great nephew or something to Alexander the Great. Now, that's not a blood relative, but that is a relative via sort of in-laws and through marriages and stuff like that. So they've got a claim to both Macedon, um, Sir uh, Sicily, and of course, southern Rome as well from Pyrrhus's empire. And I mean, I guess you could say there's also a claim to Alexander's empire being related to Alexander somehow. So this guy had plenty of claims. Now, let's have a look at him in general. We don't want to look at that. Let's have a look at his stats. So he's the faction leader because he starts amazing. Eight command is incredible. He's a good uh, good attacker, good commander, skilled cavalry commander, wall breaker, all that sort of thing. Drill master as well, which is more movement points, which is fantastic. And also energetic. So he has 35% movement points, which is crazy. Now, I wanted to show you some of these new traits just because it's really cool uh, that all these new traits have been added. He's from Ambraki. He's an Epirote as well. He's bright, magnetic, and vigorous and unreliable, though. Selfish and pessimistic and a night fighter. But if we have a look at the stats here, we can see, look at those movement points. Crazy. He has some fantastic stats to uh, his fighting ability uh, and also pretty good stats when it comes to... Um, managing cities as well. But of course, we are going to use him to fight quite a 
bit, which will be amazing. So let's have a look at our nation. We start with about eight settlements over here in Western Greece. And we are going to go for the Ptolemies now. We have the GCS to the east of us. We have the GCS to the north of us. And we've got the Akarnanians down to the south. I am going to do exactly the same tactic that I did in my Epirus guide, guys. So if you want faction guides, there's plenty out there in that playlist as well. Um, but like I say, we're going to do the same tactic. I have tested taking Iginion up here because it's got no walls. But it's actually worthless. It's only a town of 400. So it's really not worth going for that. It's much more worth it, in my opinion, in going for Farsalos or Tricker. We are going to go for Farsalos. So let's get a moving with our first lot of troops. We're going to leave behind the Greek Slingers because they're nice and cheap. And let's move relatively nicely through the middle and see what we can do. So we're going to go through there. Now, I am going to use my spy to try and open the gates. Something that I always forget to do, guys. He did get in, so we are going to try and open the gates next turn, which will save us a turn as well. Now, this is a really good area to take because these rebels down to the south act as a buffer state with everyone else. Remember, playing on very hard, guys, the AI is just going to attack us if they border us. Unless they are the GCS because the GCS thank you to Mosca for letting me know this the GCS are actually um, coded to be passive to the player compared to the rest of the AI okay you really don't want that do you not uh, let's try that one more time again uh, okay that's interesting how about the diplomat because sometimes if you go to a different person they're fine. Well, we'll try next turn. But for now, we're going to get trade rights with the Akarnanians. And let's try and sell some map information. The classic tactic, guys, of selling map information. And that's got us some extra cash. We are on minus 50. So that's uh, not great. We're already allied with the Aetolians. So that's why I didn't go down and speak to them then. But let's have a look at our cities. We've got quite a few large towns. We've got five large towns and three towns. And some of them are quite upset. Oh, and yes, sorry, I wanted to say, this guy, Cleonimos of Sparta, this is the guy Pyrrhus tried to take uh, the throne of Sparta for. So it's really cool he's represented in the mod. Uh, but he's a pretty old bloke, so he's not going to stick around for too much longer, I don't think. The other issue we have as Epirus is we are pretty much the only place that has Epiroke culture. Everywhere else does not have Epiroke culture, so... Yeah, it's not fantastic. I mean, eventually as well, we're going to get rid of some of these guys out of these garrisons. But for now, I'm happy keeping them in, managing these cities, getting us some more money for what it's worth for now. So in Ambrakia, can we go up to high? Of course we can. Fantastic. So let us recruit a unit because we definitely need more units. Now, I'm not going to recruit a Deuteroy because we've got plenty of phalangites and... We're gonna, we want a few more mobile troops, in my opinion, at this point. So let's get the Thurioforoi. Let's also have a look at what we can build. Now, from my experience, the best thing to build is likely this port in Ambrakia. Because 249, that pays for itself in literally 10 turns, which is fantastic. Now, let's also look for some good buildings. We can't, unfortunately, afford... Another port. So we are going to go for some farming in some of these regions. Now, probably the land clearance so we can get two of them. Uh, and we can build in a few more places. You can see the land clearance gets an extra 68. But if we actually look at our land, guys, it is awful fertility. So we do actually start in a weak economic position. But we're going to turn that round pretty darn quickly. Now, we've got to be wary of the Akarnanian League. But for now, we are going to go against the Antigonids. I don't think there's anything else to show you. I think in terms of diplomacy, all that sort of thing, we're all good. We've just got the Antigones as our, uh, as our enemies. And we've got the allies of the Aetolian League right now. I don't think there's anything else. So, I'll end the turn, guys. And I will see you after the turn. Ooh, scary GCS. But in all of my test runs literally all of them they have not attacked so i'm hoping they don't this time let's also try for the alliance okay no problem we'll sell you some map information gcs and then maybe you'll go for the alliance okay we'll try next time we're going to come around this way there is a gcs settlement down here somewhere there it is 
So let's come around here. Who is that? The Antigonids? Well, we don't want to talk to them. I'll come and talk to the Boeotians, though. Let's try and get a trade right. Potentially an alliance as well. No, they really don't. They really don't want an alliance. Now, it's never good to offer them something after you've been declined, guys. Although they did accept then. Generally, what happens if... if uh, if your offer is declined the first time, they are much more likely to decline it the second time. So just bear that in mind when you're doing your own uh, diplomatic negotiations. You can reset it by going and talking to someone different or by gifting them like 10 gold and it will reset it. I don't know why that is. It's just a quirk of the engine. Apparently it's demanding me offering people alliances. Maybe because I'm at war with the Antigonids and they think we're going to die very soon. But let's come back so we can talk to the GCS next time and hopefully get an alliance. Now, this is the moment of truth. First of all, let's have a look at what we've got going on here. The Heraclea Pontica and Galatians are at war. That's an interesting one. I've not seen that on turn one before. Caedonia and Notos, very expected Cretan factions. And Bithynia and uh, Heraclea Pontica have now broken their alliance because of this war. And lots of allies have been declined. The Ptolemies on Selge. What a pointless alliance for the Ptolemies. But anyway, <laughs> the Antigonids have also allied the Boeotians. That's why they didn't want to ally with us. But that is fine. And of course, we lost a lot of money on that turn. But let's go for the moment of truth. Yes! And he did open the gates. Fantastic, guys. Now, I know it's only a single mercenary hoplite. But I probably am going to play this battle, guys. Just so you can see us play our first battle of the campaign. Because it's the first battle. And we always want to get hyped for this battle. Now there is that big Antigonid army that was in Pella. It should be coming down to try and kill us anytime soon. So for now we are going to just try and blitz as many settlements as possible off the Antigonids. And then muster our forces to go and try and beat back. The glorious Antigonid army that we are going to hopefully beat in battle. We shall see. We shall see. But let's get into this battle, guys. It's going to be a relatively quick one and it will be heavily edited. So we can see the first battle of our Epirus Blitz campaign, boys. Let's go. Our foes are gathering and it would be ill-mannered to keep them waiting. Yes. They seem so eager to face our lines. So eager to test themselves. Okay, not not the greatest of first battle speeches from old Alexander there. I'm not going to lie, but <laughs> it's a start. It's a start. It's his first one, guys. We'll give him a pass for now. <laughs> now, while we're waiting for them to form up, we might as well have a look at our glorious boyos. Here are the Deuteroi, the standard phalangites for Epirus. And they are actually a very beautiful unit. I love the whites on those boys. We've got our Thurio Foroi, standard. These guys are just contemplating what's about to happen. The city is going to be theirs. We do have this uh, sort of more elite unit of Phalangites down here that we can't actually recruit right now because we don't have the capability to. So that's why we're leaving them outside the city. But these are more elite boys, and they look stunning, don't they? They look fantastic. So do the Greek Hoplites. We also got our Athamanium Feltasts. We might not be able to catch too many of them because they're running. But here they go. There they go. Lovely. Lovely boys. And of course, we've got our Greek general's bodyguard. Standard bodyguard. And of course, the cheeky little Zistaphoroi in there. So very beautiful, beautiful units in this mod. As always, guys. As always. So let's get our guys in position and I'll see you in a sec. So now we're going to bait them off the town square with our Peltas boys. If they actually do end up firing, I'm not sure. Oh, there they go. Over the... Uh, over the top of the building. Let's see if we can bait them out. If we can't bait them out, it's just going to be a squish on the town square. But hopefully we can. So I might have to just get one of these guys a little bit closer to them just to bait them off. But sometimes they will just stand and take it on the town square. Which is actually the clever thing to do, to be honest. That is what you should do in this situation. So, yeah. Good from the AI there. We're going to try and get the... Uh, these boys in behind. We're also going to get these boys. There we go. Come on, the boys. Let's go. I'm hoping they will come off the town square, which it looks like they're not going to now. Fire at them then. If they're not going to do it, we shall just come and kill them. So let's go. 
We're going to lose a few of the Thurioforoi, but that is fine. That's not a problem at all. And we're just going to have to squish them to death, which is unfortunate, but it's just something we're going to have to do. I'm also bringing my general up here, guys. Now, the reason being is because he's got eight command. And with eight command, he has a big influence on more attack uh, skill and defense skill for these boys if they're in his radius. So they are going to attack and defend better and have more morale if they are in his radius. So, of course, we are going to bring the general up just so we get less losses and kill more men. But that is it. That looks like the battle is over. Come on, guys. Kill the last two. Yeah, get the phalanx down. That'll do it. <laughs> the last single man. Glorious. Well, a glorious victory for Epirus at the start of our campaign. Very nice indeed. There we go, guys. We lost seven men. We actually didn't lose any to friendly fire, which I'm very surprised about. But a glorious victory to start off the campaign. I will see you back on the campaign map. Victory and honor. And of course, we're going to enslave, guys. We're always enslaved. Never exterminate. And that has instantly made Kaikiros expand. Now, that is the reason why we have not built anything this turn so far. So that we have enough money to build what we want after this. Because, of course, we're going to destroy that recruitment building. And this, of, this is an Aeolian settlement. Interesting. But Kaikiros, it's that one, isn't it? Let's make sure we plop that in. Because, ideally, we want as many ports as possible in this region so that we can start making proper money. I have found in 0.6, the meta is really, really, really all about trade, it seems. Now, a lot of ports, because you get a lot of base farming income anyway, so ports and trade building seem to do very well, especially when you have regions with a lot of trade goods. Do we have any trade goods in here? We actually, oh no, we don't. Not too many trade goods around this region, although there are horses and hides up to our north which uh, would be nice to grab. Now, let's get our spy into the next city of Ferai, and let's see if he can open the gates once again. And we will use Alexander to start with, and unfortunately, he didn't. Now, the reason why I wanted to check that is because we are going to do a little cheeky tactic where we blitz these boys. Now, can we... Yes, one turn for the ramp. That's fantastic. So let's now go with... Say an army like that. Although I'll need to leave an Athamanian Peltas behind in Pharsalos um, for now. So, looks like we're just going to split the army in two then. That's fine. That's not a problem. Let's get another Deuteroy in there. So, that is a Phalangite army pretty much. Let's get another Deuteroy in there and a Cavalry, of course. So... Of course, this doesn't seem like it's any better than just going with the full army. But in fact, we're going to take these settlements in half the time that we would if we took um, one army to do this. Unfortunately, the gates weren't opened by the spy as well. But uh, I could have maybe tried this city as well. But it's a mistake. <laughs> it's a mistake. Did we gain any retinues there? Because there's a one retinue. I really, really would like to show you. But let's have a look at his stats now. Because he is uh, well supplied. Enemy camp captured. But he is now blooded. So this general has commanded an army for the first time. Having this first taste of combat is now familiar with giving orders. He has commanded at least one battle and has gained enough experience to understand the nature of command. The men under his command are still likely to lack confidence in him. So we need to win a few more battles with that boy, with Alexander. Before we get the proper good traits for morale. Uh, which I think is a really, really cool addition. So, uh, we've got 1,600 left. But I'm actually saving up so I can build a port in this region over here. So, we'll save up a little bit more. And we'll pump the tax rate down to low here just to keep them happy. And I'll see you after the end turn, guys. Here we are, guys. And we actually have... <laughs> A new Pyrrhus, which is fantastic. A new family member called Pyrrhus. Hopefully, we can make them the faction leader at some point. And the following factions are now at war. So, there's some interesting ones in here. Pergamon and Ptolemies, that's not so unusual. Normally, though, the Ptolemies go for Chios rather than Pergamon. So, interesting to see that happening. And the Boeotians and Aetolians are now allies, which is a little bit scary for us. But the Seleucids and Bithynia having a ceasefire is kind of crazy, really. 
Because Seleucus can go and just destroy them. We've also got a little bit of rioting in Dodona. So what we're going to do is we're going to take Helenos, our faction heir, currently. And we're going to stick him in Dodona. Keep it on high because it stays at 70% and go down to normal here. Just because this is a settlement that does border the Antigonids. So they can come through and take this. It's unlikely, but they could do. Um, and we've also got Fenike over here, which is completely guarded by mountains and not bordering anyone apart from rebels. So it's not going to get taken. So we don't need a general in there per se. We've also got those land clearances in now. And we've got the Thuriophoroi in Ambrakia. So, let's see what we want to build. Ideally, a port in Fenike. So, let's go for that. How much is that going to bring us? 187. That's also fantastic. So, let's keep that. Now, we could now go for, say, an Akontistai. They've got very low upkeep. Greek archers. Yeah, the Greek archers and the slingers have actually more upkeep than the Akontistai. So, let's pop the Akontistai in there. It seems like a waste of money for now, but it's actually going to be... Um, a garrison troop. So we are going to garrison with those boys. Now, before we do anything else, we are going to take both of these settlements. And I'm going to do this off camera, guys, because you don't need to see these tiny little siege battles um, on the camera, of course. So I will do it off camera, and it's just going to be exactly the same te uh, technique that we used last time. So you're not going to miss anything. So I'll see you after these battles. There we go. And we did lose maybe a few more men than last time unfortunately but wasn't too many only 18 mainly because the deuteroy got caught on one of the flanks which is one of course one of the uh, the massive downsides to phalangites overall but a good victory in the first the northern city and let's enslave as usual and destroy the recruitment building so we've got a load more cash now we can actually join these boys straight up but for now, let's just do this battle by itself because I really want to spawn a general in here so that either we can bolster our army or, secondly, just govern, govern one of these richer cities. Like this one, 1,900 for Thebai Pathetides is crazy good for early game. So I would love a general in there to get us some extra money. We've also got Antigonia... Chionia has expanded now because of that, and we've got enough money, so we're definitely going to build that straight away. And now Alexander of Epirus is wealthy from looting all of these cities. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, let's do that second battle, and I'll see you at the end of that, guys. Another glorious victory for the Epirotes, guys. And this time we did lose a lot more men. Fair play to them, but they wouldn't come off the town square. So, unfortunately, we had to grind them. And, of course, we only had one unit of phalangite, so we couldn't, like, just squish them and not get any casualties. But it's still fine. We've still got plenty of an army. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we get a general. But I'm not too hopeful after that victory. Glorious, glorious Thebai Patheotides. Fantastic. Let's get rid of this as well. And nowhere actually grew that time, which is fine for us. So let's have a look. See if our spy now can open these gates. Please do it, sir. He's uh, been successful once again. Glorious, glorious, glorious. Yes, so sir. let's leave Thebai Pathiotides without a garrison for now. Just because it borders rebel territory. So we don't really need to worry about it too much. Let's pop that in there. And we are going to group our army back together. Leave the Athamanian Peltas for now. And join back up. And the reason being, I'm assuming that Antigonid army is somewhere. But we don't know exactly where. Going to pop that down to low, uh, to medium for now. Just to keep it happy. Um, and we've got 1,000 gold. Now, can we build any more farms anywhere? We can build a trader. Yeah, not ideal the traders early on. They're a lot better when you get trade goods in the region. So let's build the land clearance over here instead. Right, guys, I will see you after. Okay. No, Thebai Pathiotides is not happy. Neither is Ferai. Uh, so I'm thinking we move from Pharsalos into there just for a turn. Let's pop that in there and hope we're going to have to just jockey this garrison around. This is why we needed another general 
and we needed more garrison troops. That's why we're recruiting more garrison troops right now. So let's get this Thuriophoroi on the way as well. So they can actually... It's a bit of a waste, but they can garrison maybe for a little bit. And let's get our diplomat going around again. We've got to trade with them. Let's go back and talk to the GCS. Alliance, maybe? I'll give you map information. It's balanced. Okay, they took it. Fantastic. So we are safe from the GCS for now. So let's go talk to sort of the Achaeans. All these boys down here. Sparta as well, definitely. The boys. The uh, these Spartan boyos. We're just going to pop in alliances if we can and try and milk them for money. A thousand gold. How about a thousand? The they accept. Proposal. Fantastic. So, uh, <laughs> classic, classic, the classic Rome Total proposal. War tactics. Alliance with these boys we as well? No. no. Well, we've got a few alliances anyway, which is fine. Uh, let's go for about 800 with these guys, seen as they declined, they and it's still generous. Proposal. Fantastic. So let's keep going. We've got Ellis. We'll do that next turn. Fantastic. Well, I will see you after the end turn, guys. Here we are, guys. And I really need that spy, because during the end turn, there was a cheeky bit of movement. There was a big Antigone dot. Oh, hello. Wow. This is the first time I've seen the AI do something like this. That's very clever of the AI. I really do respect that. But that also means we are going to have to rush back home and beat this army. Because I really want to beat that army. Because once we've beaten that army, this land all the way up to Pella and Thessalonica is pretty much ours. This is the only army that they have in this region right now. At the start of the game, guys, the Antigonids are really a paper tiger. If you leave them too long, they will get very strong because it's the AI, especially on very hard. But for now, they are a bit of a paper tiger right at the start of the game. So, unfortunately, I am going to garrison with the Thuriophoroi. That's not the best idea uh, to do when, you, uh, when you're doing it. So, maybe instead of that, we will... These guys have got really happy now. I'm assuming last time it was because of cultural unrest there was a problem. So, we're going to swap them out. We're going to leave... Oh, they still won't accept on low. Hmm, what is the cultural unrest here? Yeah, it's just 25% unrest. That could be a spy and uh, just normal unrest. But it's also uh, religious differences, cultural penalty, and no governance and all that sort of thing. Now, this battle, I think we're going to auto-resolve. It's only nine men. What? Oh, oh, that's a juicy, juicy, juicy battle, guys. <laughs> Oh, well, never auto-resolve on very hard, I guess, especially against the general, and apparently a very good one at that. But let's enslave um, over here uh, at, is this Demetrias? Yes, it is Demetrias. Oh, dearie, dearie me. Well, that was not expected. Uh, but, of course, we are playing on very hard, so I probably should have expected it, especially someone who has uh, played as much of this mod as me. <laughs> Um, but yeah, right, we'll sort our armies out in a second. Got the body slave. I'm surprised we haven't got Kinias, guys. Kinias is a retinue you can get from Thessaly. And um, it's awesome to see him in the game. So I am surprised we have not got him yet. Because normally on every other run that I've done, when I've taken these, these uh, settlements, I've pretty much got him straight away. So very interesting that we haven't got him yet. But I will just explain Kinias for a second to you guys. We'll toggle the fog of war for a second so I can show you what I'm talking about. So Kinias was the uh, advisor or good friend of Pyrrhus, of Epirus. And when Pyrrhus won the first battle in Italy, I believe the battle of Heraclea, right? Someone, someone remind me in the comments. I, I believe it's Heraclea and Asculum was the one later. But I could be wrong on that order there. Uh, but the Battle of Heraclea, um, and Pyrrhus actually got to within about 60 kilometers of Rome. 60 kilometers, guys. So Rome could maybe have not been the uh, the uh, the empire that we all know today if Pyrrhus had carried on his march. But again, Rome had been sacked before, and I'm sure they would have rebounded pretty nicely. But Kinias was sent by Pyrrhus into Rome to get a peace treaty for southern Italy, Magna Graecia, um, and of course, 
leaving the Syracusans alone as well. Uh, and of course, especially the Tarentines in Tarentum. So he was sent into Rome to get um, a peace treaty with the Romans, of course. And the Senate was very much of the opinion at the time that they should probably do this peace treaty until the hero of the hour, <laughs> mean old, or, or the villain, depending on which side you're on, I guess. I guess for me, he's the villain. Um, mean old Appius Claudius Caicus, a blind old senator who was so old and infirm that he couldn't even walk to the Senate. He had to be carried in a litter. He was completely blind. He couldn't see he was that old. He was carried to the Senate in a litter, and he argued fervently for Rome's continuation of the war against Pyrrhus, saying that they should never surrender to the Epirates. And mean old Appius Claudius Caicus, I guess he was right, because in the end, Rome won. So, uh, I guess Pyrrhus had a blind old senator to thank for his demise uh, in Italy, and of course himself, in many, many respects. So, uh, let's toggle that fog of war back off. Um, but yeah, very interesting bit of history, and you can actually get Kinius as a, uh, as a retinue, which I think is so cool. What a boy. So, let's move this guy all the way up here because I want to see if that army uh, moves back this way. What we're also going to do is remove all of these boys. Honestly, we probably don't need retraining. I think we'll be good to go. That's on 60. That's on 100. For now, we are going to leave the Thur Thurio Foroi behind. I know it's a waste, but... Yeah, I think we, we, we kind of have to uh, if we want to keep this region all right for now. So we are going to go and try and fight this army. We're going to take a bit of a route around. We could, in fact, just go into Iginion for now. Okay, we got stuck by a GCS city we knew was there. I know that happens, but I it still annoys me that it does. <laughs> no! Oh, please root around cities. I know it's not changeable, but it would be glorious if they could root around cities. Are we able to upgrade? I was going to say, why is Ambrakia so upset right now? What is the problem here? Just squalor and unrest. Yes. Okay. Well, oh well. That's fine. So everywhere else is pretty much fine. As soon as they start rioting, we'll put the uh, tax rates down lower so that they remain happy. So if we press that, we can see we've got a couple of unhappy ones. And over here, of course, plenty of unhappy places. Now, are we ever going to recruit in Thessaly? Yes, we are. So I am not going to destroy these buildings because if we have a look at our recruitment hub here. Let's go on to number two. We can see we do have some AOR Greek Peltas here, but it's level three that we want to see because there should be Thessalian cavalry. No, there is no Thessalian cavalry. Not in that settlement anyway. It's probably over here. So, let's have a look. Now, number four is just our factional, of course. Number three. There we go. The Thessalian Cavalry. And have a look at these boys. These guys are one of the best cavalry units in the game. They are fantastic. They are, you know, almost to the level of Hetairoi. Or, or probably actually to the level of Hetairoi with 44 charge, 30 defense, 17 morale, and 14 melee attack for a cavalry unit is insanely good. These guys are insanely good. So we are definitely going to recruit from Pharsalos at least, or where we can get Athesalian Cavalry. We can get them there. Can we get them in at Pathiotides? Yes, we can. It's just here that we cannot get them. So for now, we are going to delete these barracks because we're not going to make this into a recruitment hub. So let's get some extra money. So we've got plenty of money to spend on our boys going forward. Now, Parmenion, I don't know where you're going to go, my friend, but wherever you do, I hope that I can uh, can beat you. I mean, it does look like he's got a pretty darn decent army. We might have to look for some mercenaries. We are going to get a slinger. No, sorry, another Akontistai. But if we fight this battle, they've got some mercenary Tarantine cavalry as well. What's that? 11 units versus my 9 damaged units. I mean, I think we can still win, but it's going to be a close one, isn't it? So, 
It'll probably be a brutal battle, but that's fine. Right, let's do our building, guys. And let's actually focus on these settlements over here to start with. Try and make them happy. Again, we can put that up all the way to very high, which is fantastic. So in here, let's get the land clearance. And then in Demetrias, let's get some happiness. Now, our temples is the Shrine to Dionysus or the Shrine to Aphrodite are really the option. So let's go for Dionysus for that extra tax rate for now. Then in Ferai, which is quite a good old settlement. Actually, a better settlement to uh, train in there than this one. We could actually go for a recruitment number one straight away. And in fact, that is what I'm going to do because we only have one recruitment center right now, guys. And while we've got the cash... Let's pop that in. Let's also get some happiness in here. So let's go for, I mean, yeah, it's just that 10% happiness is really good for Dionysus. So let's pop that in. Now, where else are we not building? Let's check. Just in Korkira and Pesaron. If we can get both of these, I will be very happy. Unfortunately, not. So let's go for the trader there. It's probably going to be very little because it's... Yeah, it's, it's just land trade that it affects right now because it's not trading abroad. Oh, it can't. But that's fine. It's going to pay for itself in a lot of turns. But for now, I think it's the best option because we're still recruiting. So there's no point spending money there. There's no point wasting money. We might as well get building something while we can. So let's press the end turn and I'll see you after that. Hopefully this army stays here so we can go and confront it. But I guess we'll find out. Ah, yes. The Diplomat. How do I always forget about the goddamn proposal. diplomat? Hello, Ellis. Would you like some map information? Fantastic map information. Gives you plenty of information of the maps. And it is worth a cheap price of 1,200 denarii. Apparently, apparently that's too much. I mean, who's to say that our map information is not worth 1,200? Offered too much. In good conscience, we cannot accept. Oh, dearie, dearie me. Oh, a glorious day. The army has obliged and they are around here. And we can actually see what's in the army now. It's a lot of mercenaries. They do have some Hetairoi, which you can see are very good. Now, you can see the Thessalians have more defense but less attack. So these guys are a fantastic unit as well. But the Thessalians are about as good. Now, the Agima is the real scary thing. So are the Tarantines. Now, can we get any mercenaries we can get zero mercenaries right now that's terrible so let's go here let's also go here and we are going to attack them guys that is going to be our closing battle for this episode which is kind of glorious we've also had another guy come of age fantastic so what i think we'll do we'll also pop you down to normal now that you're rioting let's get this guy governing in here in fact no we've we're plenty happy in our homeland, so let's get him over in towards Farsalos so we can use that Thurio Foroi for now. Now, they have started to get a bit happier over here, as we can see. A little bit, not a huge amount, but a little bit happier. So, Paphlagonia and the Galatians. No, don't kill Paphlagonia, man. Oh, and apparently we're at war with the Akarnanian League. I didn't even realize. I didn't see that. Where have they... Okay, they've blockaded our port. So that's broken their alliance with the Aetolians. So that's a little bit unfortunate because that means we're going to have to stop our campaigning north for a little bit while we go and deal with the Akarnanians. Ideally, I would like to make these guys a protectorate state, a buffer state against the Aetolians for now. Um, but we'll see what we can do about that because I'm very hard. It's very hard to get them to agree to do anything like that. Now we've got a port in Ambrakia, which is fantastic. That trade has pumped up a lot. A lot. Where are we actually trading with? We're trading twice with Oinadai. <laughs> I don't know why, but we are. Which is... I don't know. Around here. I'm guessing that's Oinadai. Yes, fantastic. Okay, that's good. So, first things first, our main priority is getting more troops. Now, let's have a look at our army composition right now. Yeah, it's pretty much all infantry, but let's start getting some more Thurio Foroi. The Thurio Foroi for us, just a little bit better. Although the uh, the Hoplites have more defense, the Thurio Foroi have two more attack. And for the, uh, my playstyle and our play, I think the attack is going to be better. 
So let's have a look at what we can build now in Umbrakia. Now we've built that. Let's go straight for that land clearance. We haven't even got a land clearance in there. Wow. Um, and in Oricon, I think it's probably time to go for a communal farming. It's probably only going to give 68 or something, 65. Um, how about the market? I mean, that is definitely not worth it right now. It's going to be worth it later down the line, but right now it's not. We could also get the sewer just for population growth, but I think money is more important to us at the moment. Are we building everywhere? We are. Now, let's check all these. That's 70. That's fine. So there is a chance of them rioting on 70, guys, but I do like to live uh, life close to the edge, so uh, <laughs> it's a very low chance, so it's fine. Right, we'll get into fast loss. We could actually do with this unit, but he's not going to have enough movement points. So let's get into this battle. This is going to be an interesting one because we are heavily outnumbered. 1,000 versus about 700 troops. We are, of course, playing on very hard as well. So that's going to add even more spice to the party. But if we can snipe that general, that's all we can really hope for, isn't it? Now, while we're here... Check there are no mercenaries available. Absolutely none. Fine. So let's get going with this fight. And look, this is a fine day for battle. Every day is a fine day for battle when your heart is brave. Yes. Well, getting s slightly better with the speeches, Alexander, but not fantastic. I mean, if you've heard the Greek speeches before, uh, they're pretty... Uh, all pretty similar, unfortunately. <laughs> so, we're going to use these boys to flank. And we're going to use our cavalry to smash the general if we can. So, if you want to know how to move units like this, you hold alt, guys, and drag. Um, and also, we're going to press R so we don't run. If you want to make it uh, turn around, hold control as well and drag. So you can do that, of course. Now, while they are repositioning, let's get going forward. And get speeding up there. General is on the right-hand side. So that's quite good for us. Um, because he's exposing... No, he's exposing his right-hand side to us. We'd prefer him to expose the left. So if you really want to get into detail this much, guys, min-max-wise, you always want to charge a general on the left side if you can. Because the general always stands on the left. So if you charge him on the right-hand side, quite often you're not going to do any damage to the general. But if you charge him on the left-hand side, you can really do some serious damage. So let's go and try and snipe him. Uh, I'm a bit scared of this Tarantine cavalry. But honestly, right now, we just need to get them engaged in melee across the front line. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's keep creeping forward with these boys. So we can try and engage them. Keep coming. And you guys get there. Same with you. Now, slightly risky situation here, especially with that general. Guys, don't run. It's fine. Now they've engaged us in melee. That's great for us. So let's keep coming forward. You guys get in there. You guys get in there. And there goes the general. There goes the general. Let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can snipe him a little bit. Okay, guys. You need to be in phalanx formation. What are you doing, man? That's stupid. Okay, here we go with the charge. Let's group all this cavalry together as well. Now, that general was a very small unit, so I'm assuming we can kill him. Good. Fantastic. Morale is king in this game, guys. Let's try and get a uh, massive charge off on the Hetai Roy as well. Right, now you guys halt, because otherwise we're going to die. So let's get a good charge off on the Hetai Roy. That should be a really nice charge. Now, although they're going to beat us in melee if we stay in the melee, that charge should have done enough damage to their hit points for a second. They're also wavering already. Guys, you're... Your formation is awful, man. Right, let's come round. Come round. This is the Agima, so we've got to be very wary of them. Let's just get away from the Hetairoi for now. Where's our other small unit? Oh, these boys. Here we go. Let's get there, and let's see if we can fire into the Tarantines. Come on, guys. Let's go. You guys get over here. Our cavalry's already a bit tired, which is never great. If we can engage them. In the flank. And then bring the hammer down with these boys. That would be fantastic. Okay, that was not the best charge. But ideally, we want to break this Hetairoi. There we go. Because that is a fantastic unit. Once they're broken, we should have free reign for all these Peltasts. So let's have a go at them. 
Everyone else is pretty eager. Now you guys have done that. Let's try and get around so we can fight the Hoplites in the back. Should be able to break these mercenary Greek Peltas pretty easily. Now, the Antigonids start with a lot of mercenaries at the start of the game. Uh, the main problem for us here, though, is fighting those Phalangites. Uh, because our cavalry is obviously never going to really do too well against the Phalangites. But look at them. There we are. They've decided not to engage here. Looks like the Tarantines are actually charging. No, they're just going for that. Now, we may not be able to destroy this army fully, but we will be able to beat it back. See, the Hetai Roy are back now. Oh, guys, guys, guys. That is a mess. That is a mess. That is a serious mess. Okay, Tarantines. Charge, charge, charge. Okay, we've got to weather this storm. We've got to weather this storm. Rally the men. And hopefully we can break these boys. They're only shaken. Steady. Shaken. That's going to be really tough. Let's get out. Let's get out. We've got to, we've got to count our losses for a second. So, what's going on here? This is just the big surround surround game, is it? We'll just get in there. What's going on with this? <laughs> God, the Phalangites, they're so messy when they get out of formation. It's, it's really, really hard to deal with. Right, kill the Tarantines now. If we actually get a good charge off on them, that should be better. So, yeah, hopefully we can break these boys. Come on. Okay, there we go. Broken one. Let's break the Hetairoi now. Come on, kill the Hetairoi. They will probably come back, the Tarantines, which is a bit unfortunate. But I think we've got cavalry advantage now, which is good. Broken. Kill all them. Right, now we come back. Now we come back because we can break a lot of these units just by charging into them or being near them, really, is the other option. Oh, God, look at this. <laughs> what a mess. What a mess. There's, the problem is, once they're in like this, there's nothing you can do. Like, you can only press halt and they'll try to reform, but... There's only a certain amount you can do. Right, let's go straight in the Greek Peltas. We're now very tired with our cavalry, which is a bit of a worry. Because they're going to be incredibly slow now. Um, but that's fine. See, like, we can't even catch the Peltas. Right, well, let's not worry about that for now. Let's also go and just stand close to these boys. See if we can break them. I'm going to put it on very fast as well. So they're all shaken. Good. So the reason why I'm putting them close by, guys, is because by putting them close, they should get overwhelming numbers. Right, you go fight those mercenary phalangites. Let's also see if we can charge into them. We're also going to rally them in so that our general doesn't die on the charge. And that has broken them straight away. Fantastic. Let's kill as many as we can while we can. They shouldn't be fighting to the death now, unfortunately. Uh... Fighting to the death. No, we don't want that to happen. Yes, now they're broken. Good. Now we can deal with those boys. So, out you go, cavalry. Out you go. You should come and fight them. You boys, let's go and fight the Peltasts. Our cavalry is so tired now. This is the problem. See, like this, there's nothing we can really do here. Let's try that and see whether that'll work. But, like, this mess of a formation, whatever it is, <laughs> is just such a mess. Now, let's try and walk through. That should be better. Where's the cavalry then? Who is this? Get out, get out. We don't want to fight that hoplite without charging them. This is going to be quite a brutal battle, but it was the big battle we needed in this first episode. So let's just kill some of them while we can. Because ideally, we need to get below 85%. I mean, we're close right now, which is fantastic. You guys go after them. Right. Okay, we've broken one of the phalangites over here. What is this mess? In this mess? Oh, dearie me. These guys have taken a battering, and they were our really good unit. You guys halt. So now they're broken. Now we just need to beat the Agima. Uh, you guys are done there. Now there's not much we can really do. Are you withdrawing? No. We just need to kill as many as we can. So let's keep going. Okay. Right then, let's keep coming forward. What I'm going to do is send you guys, that you're knackered. Everyone, they're only winded though, that's the problem. So you guys try and catch up with them. We're going to chase these boys. The cavalry will eventually catch them, but just not very quickly. That's the problem. So let's break them and kill as many as we can. Now, who do we have left to kill? I mean, there's Tarantine cavalry. They are not fantastic. These guys have managed to actually run through quite a few men. That's glorious. 
Um, have we beat them back? Oh, I mean, maybe we fully destroyed this army now. So if the Tarantines withdraw, that's not too bad. Oh, well, quite a glorious victory, I've got to say. But not the best victory we could have ever had. But we were heavily outnumbered, and we are, of course, playing on very hard. So you guys get them. You guys keep going. So I just want to chase them down to make sure that we kill 85%. Remember, guys, on uh, Rome Total War, you've got to kill 85% and their general to fully destroy the army. Unless it's a rebel army, which should die straight away, no matter whether the, um, however much you kill. Um, so, yeah. Get them. And that should be it, guys. That should be it. Well... A glorious victory. We didn't quite marmalize them, did we? But it was a glorious victory, nonetheless. And a fantastic victory to end the episode on. I mean, we killed pretty much three times what they did. The General's Bodyguard and the Zistafore going ham. But the Deuteroi, 104, 147, did a lot better than the Ambracchio Phalangites. But they were fighting the Agima, so that is why. But a glorious victory to end the episode on. Let's get back on the campaign map and revel in our glorious victory. Fantastic. I am also going to... Oh, dear me. Dear, 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 dear me. So apparently they had a second army right next door. Have they managed to ambush us? It just says battle, not ambush. So, okay, no, it is a full ambush. Wow. Wow. Well, I think we're going to start on that next time. But how can we defend against this, really? I mean, we've got... Oh, my God. They've got mercenary Thessalian cavalry as well. Wow, 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 wow. So that's going to be a really tough one to fight. Now, again, it's going to be very similar. We're going to have to snipe the general. The infantry shouldn't be a problem. The Greek peltasts and the hoplites... Especially against our phalangites. But let's see what we can do. Maybe we'll have to do a defensive square formation. Like the Napoleonic Wars with our phalangites. But I will see you on the next episode, guys, when we do that. So, if you have enjoyed this episode, I would really appreciate a like and subscribe. And do remember, the second episode is coming out right away after this one. An hour after this one goes on to premiere. So, you should be able to watch this one, the second one, straight away, which is awesome for you guys if you want to binge watch. So thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure, as always. Please do like and subscribe, and I will see you all again on the next video.